Hey guys, I'm Thomas with Southern Outdoors NC. Uh, just going to, uh, here with uh, Jerry Dillsaver. Uh, just want to ask him a couple questions. Jerry, how you doing? Doing all right, Thomas. How about you this morning? Doing good. Uh, just want to ask you, what, as a starting fisherman, fishing the fishing coast, what would be a good uh, a good thing to start out with as far as fishing for uh, redfish and, and maybe some flounder? Like a number one tip you would recommend to somebody? Well, the thing, the thing that is going to make most people comfortable with it is to have some success right off. Right. And what I suggest to people in that is use some live bait first right. and catch a few fish so that first you're comfortable there are fish there. Right. So that when you go back with your artificials, if your first attempt to use them isn't the right action, you will start, you will try different things and speed up, slow down, different actions because you know you've caught fish there before right. and you'll work with it until you find that action. Most people fish artificials way too fast yeah, and you, yeah. you, you have to calm them down and slow them down right. and if you've had some success first and you know there are fish there you're yeah. more likely to take the time and do that without getting frustrated well I think that's what my problem is I think, <laughs> I think honestly I, I probably fish mine a little bit too fast I, 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 I tend to use use the three inch gold uh, on a quarter ounce jig a lot I, 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 I found that to catch quite a bit of fish for that, but still again, that may be why, because a lot of times I found out that if I'm just, if I throw out there and just kind of let it sit more and reel it back a lot slower, that seems to, that seems to be the trick sometimes. It is, you know, the, the fish are looking for that, that injury, you know, it's the survival of the fittest stuff. Yeah. That one that can't quite keep up or whatever, it's going to be easy to catch. Yeah. It's going to be that slow moving one. The three inch size is a good choice. A lot of people get this fixation of bigger bait, bigger fish. But many times the, the fish won't put forth the effort to chase down a huge bait. You, you limit your, your scope. A fish this long won't chase down that. You know, you need one like that. There aren't many of that around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so fishing those smaller baits. I've even had some days late fall and early winter right. where we were just about to think that well the trout aren't biting today, and I went, you know, I got some two-inch shrimp in here. Let's throw a couple before we quit, yeah. and that's what they wanted. And then the next hour you let it out on a bait that's that long. Wow. Pretty cool. Is, there, is it better than, better for a flounder or redfish? Low low tide, really low tide, high tide, mid tide. I mean, what what would be your suggestion? You need just about for everything: trout, redfish, flounder, all of them. A moving tide is the first key. Okay. I think the falling tide is better. And what you will see is there are some creeks that are going to drain real quick at the first part of the falling tide. And then creeks, the smaller creeks that are deeper, are going to still be draining later in the tide. I pay attention to those areas. And you know, sometimes time won't let you go at optimum. There, there's just W-O-R-K, four letter <laughs> word that gets in the way. Yeah. But know where, where the different creeks are, and early in the tide, I'll fish those shallow draining creeks that are going to drain quick. Because any bait that swam up in them has got to come back into the main body. And that's what you're doing. You're letting that falling tide flush, it's really a flush, and they've got to come back out and stay alive. Right, right, right. And then the deeper creeks will have enough water in it that those fish don't come out until later in the time. And your, your bigger predators will tend to gather around the mouths of them to feed. On the rising tide, they're in the same place because the bait's going back in the creek. And on the, on the high, dead high tide, even your predators will tend to go up those creeks and chase that bait a little further. Okay. Wow, wow, wow.